As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? Well, you got to go with the money. Aaron Judge. Whoa. Huge deal, which, you know, it's interesting. We talked about Lamar Jackson and the betting on yourself and how that hasn't seemed to go to have gone well as of right now. Well, Aaron Judge bet on himself as well. In the spring, the Yankees offered him a contract worth $210 million. He decided, ah, you know what? I'm going to wait and see where this thing goes. Had the historic season and now has signed a deal with the Yankees. Nine years, $360 million, $40 million a year, a difference of $150 million from the contract he was offered in the spring. I would say, Gabe, that that bet turned out well for Aaron Judge. I I would say so. I think it's safe to say he's rich. <laughs> he is rich. I, I've got a question for you, though. Yeah. Have you seen what there was a guy named Bradford William Davis who put out this thing about the baseballs? Did you see that? No. And I, I, I think it's real. I'm not entirely sure, but, and if it's not, then I look like an idiot, then Hey, whatever. But some, somebody did like a study of the baseballs that the major league baseball used this season. And like, some of them were really dead. Uh, some of them were absolutely juiced. And then there was this type of ball they called the Goldilocks, right? Not too warm or not too hot, not too cold. They called it the Goldilocks. You want to take a guess of where the majority of Goldilocks baseballs were used? New York. Playoff games and Yankees games. Regular season games. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. There, there's and, a graph in everything, Ted, where they found the Goldilocks balls. Well, I like that. Um, now, the source is Dr. Meredith Wills. Now, Aaron Judge of the who Yankees couldn't hit anything in the playoffs, so the balls didn't help them in the playoffs. They were atrocious. But um, here's the thing. I don't know about that. Did he benefit off of uh, some good baseballs? Perhaps, and maybe to the tune of $150 million. And that just underlines one of my most frustrating, um, the, the fact that Major League Baseball, uh, you can do all kinds of things that I don't care about. The pitch clock, making second base bigger, making the the shift illegal like whatever these rules are don't really care but the first thing that they need to do is agree on a universal baseball that they're going to use in preseason in regular season in postseason this year and for the rest of history you cannot it, it it really it it sucks the credibility out of your sport that you can manipulate the game however you see fit by adjusting the ball i think that is total shit for a sport i and could you the, imagine if they did that with the nfl football like they were using different balls throughout the season tom brady allegedly Change the uh, air pressure in a football, and it was like the biggest story ever, right? And Major League Baseball does it all the time, whenever they want, when they need more runs, when they need less runs, whenever they want to help a team out, whenever they don't want to help a team out. I mean, you can look at that thing and and get as conspiracy theory as you want. Like that, it's. It's bullshit. There's no other way to say it. It needs to be the same exact baseball. 
for the pitchers, for the hitters, for everyone, 100% of the time. I agree with that. And I, I can't imagine that anyone disagrees with that. And if you want to say, oh, well, the weather this time, I, just use the same damn ball. Same ball. And let everyone adjust to it accordingly. Could you imagine you know? the NBA? Like, there, there's games and I, there's teams played with a different, like a ball that weighs more or less or that like flies in the air differently. I mean, it would be insanity. Uh, the the three-point percentage is down this year. So in response, the NBA is widening the rim. <laughs> Just for the playoffs. Right? Use a different rim for the playoffs than they did the rest of the year. Something like that to affect the scoring. It's stupid. It's preposterous. And like I said, it, it just it sucks the credibility away from the sport. Yeah, no, I'm with you. All right, who do you have as your loser of the week? <laughs> I had to go with the Denver Broncos. So there's some new projected NFL draft orders that have come out. And the top top five go like this. Houston won. Chicago two, uh, the Rams three, the Br uh, Broncos four, and the Carolina Panthers five. Houston's most likely going to be number one. Of course, Chicago number two, Rams three. But the Rams do not have that pick. That pick goes to the Detroit Lions from the uh, the Stafford Goff trade. And you can look at that and say, okay, the Rams, they could really use that pick right now, not having a good year, but you got a Super Bowl ring out of the trade, right? The Denver Broncos at four. That trade is going to the Seattle Seahawks. So not only did you trade away what is now a top five pick, um, pay a ton of money for a quarterback, but now your record has got you out of exactly how you need to build your franchise moving forward. Not looking good for the Denver Broncos. The, the Broncos offense is awful. I, I saw this on Twitter. If they would just score and, and they are like, in the last 20 years in the NFL, they're one of the worst offenses we've seen. Aren't there if, several, aren't there players that have produced close to as many points as them? Oh, I'm sure. In the season. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> Just individual players. I, I saw this. They are what they're three and nine right now. If they just would have scored 18 points in regulation offensively, which is not a lot, 18 points, they'd be 10 and two. Their defense has been awesome. I mean, it's been one of the best in the NFL. Their offense is terrible. <laughs> terrible by like every metric. Like it's terrible to watch. But also if you look at like all the nerd stats, it's awful, dude. I mean, Denver is not a fun place to play football right now. There, I... I can only imagine what that locker room is like on a daily basis between the defensive guys and offensive guys. Oh, oh brutal. my God. Well, I did. I can't remember if we talked about it on here or if, if it was on radio, but that report that came out that Russell Wilson was calling plays at the line of scrimmage that were like not using that, different code words from that like no one code knew. words from Seattle. Like old stuff from Seattle at the line of scrimmage, and everyone's like, "We don't know what that. What is happening? He's not calling the right plays." Like, it makes sense. But I don't know. It's wild. They're in a uh, they're in a bad spot. There, brutal. <laughs> they are. They're terrible. That's a that's a bad offense. Good, good, good defense. Those defensive guys have every right to yell at Russell Wilson as much as they want. Mm. Getting paid that much money, dude. Figure it out. Do your job. 
Oh my guy. gosh. He's already like an annoying guy, at least to like to me. I guess I don't know him, but what I see publicly leads me to the direction that I could not stand that guy in the locker room. But I I just whenever thing like when things are good, I can't imagine what it's like when things are bad. I, I can't imagine that Nathaniel Hackett survives the season. I yeah. Which, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, I'm not saying that he's been perfect. I'm not even saying necessarily that he's been good. But whenever the the front office hands you that situation and kneecaps your future, all right, what are you going to do? I, <laughs> I mean, I guess you could fire the head coach and bring someone else in. I mean, maybe that'll help. I don't know. Tough. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. All right, let's get to my winner and loser. But first, First Fidelity Bank is a full service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs, checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more. They do it all, whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone. Everything is stress free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. Visit ffb.com for more information. And if you're a whiskey or bourbon drinker, stop what you're doing. Head to your favorite liquor store and buy some Bal Coney's products. You got to grab some of Balcony's Lineage Single Malt Whiskey. It was voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by Whiskey Advocate, and you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcony's Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn. That's the fancy corn. And that is why it has won more than 25 awards. Last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcony's Pot Still Bourbon. Its big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year-round. Remember in 2012, Balcony Single Malt won the best in glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, then Balcony's products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but the owners are from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit BalconysDistilling.com. All right, for my winner of the week, thought about going with Tulsa football. Hired Kevin Wilson to be their new head coach. Guy that recruited me to OU. Uh, I went to OU to play for him. He is as demanding as they come. But he is one hell of a football coach. I'm excited and scared for all the players there. (laughs) It's it's going to be fun and it's going to be miserable. But I hope those guys are ready to work. Uh, I, I really hope they're ready to work, and I hope that it works for him at Tulsa. Uh, I really do. I, I think that he's a great offensive mind, and I've never been around a coach that, even though sometimes some of the methods are questionable, <laughs> I've never been around a coach that gets more out of his players than than he did. So I, I'm excited for, for Tulsa. It felt like a change needed to happen there. And they got a really damn good football coach uh, to lead the program. So uh, I'm hoping this is this will jumpstart things for the Golden Hurricane. Yeah, I, I think that's a big hire for them now. Um, obviously, he's been around some programs that have had a ton of success. Obviously, at Oklahoma, um, you know, did some good things for a stretch there at Indiana. And then being offensive coordinator at Ohio State, he's he's seen some really good players come through there. He's you know, he's had his imprint on on some fantastic offenses. So that's that's about as much credibility as they could really ask for in, in a head coaching hire at Tulsa. I, I think that's a that's a home run. I think he'll probably be able to put together a really good staff as well. Wouldn't shock me if they did some really nice things there. Yeah, I'm hoping they do uh, be good for the state uh, and be good for Tulsa. So we'll see. But the Kevin Wilson era. Has begun. Now, I also thought about going with Baker Mayfield, man. Claimed off waivers by the LA Rams. Now, their offensive line is not good. 
They, I mean, they've had so many injuries, but it, it sounds like he's having to learn the playbook in like two days may have to start tomorrow night on Thursday night football, which is not ideal, but ultimately I'm glad he's getting a chance to play, right? He's getting a chance to play some games, uh, to learn some more from Sean McVay, uh, learn, learn a new system and he's about to hit free agency, man. So that's valuable. Uh, I mean, if he can show a little bit, this is a good opportunity. We've talked about him just needing an opportunity. Well, He's getting it with the three and nine LA Rams who have lost six straight. Yep. Not, not ideal, but Hey, the chance is a chance and opportunity is an opportunity. Yeah. I love, I love the opportunity for Baker. I, I I'm under no, I, I don't think they're going to go win a bunch of games, but I think Baker and Sean McVay are a really good pair both super high energy guys. Uh, Sean McVay, I know a lot of people get uh, enamored with the youth. He's not young when it comes to coaching. He has as much experience coaching and being around the game as anyone in the game in NFL. He's, he's been in the league since he's like 18 years old. Um, knows everything about it. Has a fantastic mind for the sport. He's got a experience that he can draw from of, you know, having to insert a quarterback on short time. I think this is just a really good opportunity for Baker to soak up some stuff. Like this is the best offensive mind that he's been around. Yeah. And he, I think he can learn a lot. And if you think of a, of a bunch of like former, cause McVay's a West coast offense guy, like you think about the West coast offense players like Steve young, uh, Brett Favre, I, Baker kind of fits the that that role of what those guys do. They love to do boots, love to move the quarterback, uh, a lot of short passes. I mean, he he fits the West Coast system more than he fits anything else. And I think Sean McVay could could probably do some good things with him if yeah. given the time. Like I don't expect that right out of the gate, or maybe don't expect it ever. But I think it's a great learning opportunity for Baker. Yeah, and if he plays really well, maybe they sign him to – it's not going to be a big deal, but who knows how long Stafford's got left. Right. Right? So, you know, it could be that type of opportunity for him as well. But my winner of the week, Brock Purdy. Jimmy G goes down with the broken foot early in that Dolphins game. Purdy comes in, Mr. Irrelevant, steps in and handles things well. Uh I thought he managed the game well, showed his mobility. They end up winning easily. But what an awesome situation for a rookie quarterback. Yeah, and, and you know Shanahan's one of the best offensive minds in the game. Yep. Right? So you got that guy managing you. You 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 trust him to play to your strengths and maximize those strengths as a player. And all you got to do is get the ball to Debo Samuel, get it to George Kittle get it to Christian McCaffrey and then lean on arguably the best defense in the league. Right. And I, I looked it up. San Francisco currently ranked second in DVOA. Uh, only the Cowboys are better on defense. So you're a rookie. You're getting to start for a really good football team. Who's going to go to the playoffs. Just get to manage the game, lean on the defense. Like life is good. Man, if you're Brock Purdy, like what an awesome opportunity for him. It is. It is an amazing opportunity. And he's got some really nice ability. Um and and I know Shanahan is gonna call it this way, but he needs to know that this is not about him. All right. Like you start scrambling around trying to do things out there and have one of those god awful turnovers that we know and love you for. I that's a recipe to go right back onto the bench and perhaps never play in the league again. Just distribute the football. We don't need you to do anything special. If it's not there, throw it away. That's it. Punt it. Let the de defense go to work, man. Don't don't get spun around in a circle and pull, <laughs> pulling it over your head for <laughs> one of the weirdest like pick sixes you'll ever see. Uh. <laughs> 
Yeah, that is cool though. The, some of those plays are coming, but he uh, he looked good moving around yep. well, and um, yeah, a lot of people uh, throwing out the nickname at one. Point, at one point, I looked at Twitter and trending was uh, Big C Brock. And the C word rhymes with Brock. Really? We got we got kids that listen to this. A lot of people write in and say, hey, would you cuss less? I listen with my kids, which we do not cuss a lot on here, by the way. But so, yeah, uh, Big, Big C Croc Brock. Big guy, huh? Big crock pot guy. He's got a new recipe out there. Is that yeah, what you're telling me? Yeah. <laughs> crock minus the R. Old big C uh, Brock. That was trending on Twitter for quite some time, actually. So. Uh, you could trend for worse reasons. Yeah. Yeah. So we, uh, we'll we see how it works. And Jimmy G, some news about that injury. Clean break. No ligament damage in that foot. Not a Liz Frank situation. Bones are all still lined up properly, I guess. So. They they don't think he'll need surgery, but we'll see if he's able to get back for you know the divisional round or the NFC championship game or something like that if if they're able to advance that far. But it looks like the Brock Purdy show right now, man. Good. Which is interesting. Rare situation whenever a broken foot is good news. The news yeah. you're looking for. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. All right, for my loser of the week. Thought about going. Did you see this with the Titans? Yeah. Titans GM John Robinson fired. And, and listen, I know they got smacked by the Eagles the other night. And like, I get it. And I know AJ Brown, who he traded away, had himself a day, right? I get it. But they've won the AFC South two years in a row. They were the number one seed in the playoffs of the AFC last season. Uh, they're in first place in the division right now. Is it just like, this is strange, right? To fire a GM when your organization has had success like that. Like there has to be more to it, right? You would think, I, I don't know. I, and a, a lot of it may have to do with like, like some of the AJ Brown stuff beforehand. Like, like there's, there's been some lingering issues there. I don't know. Um, it is interesting. Like I'm, I'm curious to see the direction they go with it. Do you think that Vrabel wants the Belichick model? He could. He could just want complete control. And, and maybe that's it. But I I mean, when the when the organization is having the type of success the Titans are having, like normally the GM does not get fired. I know. So I don't know if this is a there's got to be more to it, man. And it could be Vrabel say, Hey, I want, I, I want all of it. I want to control everything. And uh, maybe that's it, but I don't know. I saw this. I was like, wait, what the hell? And I went and double checked. I was like, yeah, they were the one seed last year. Yeah. They've won the division two years in a row. They're in first right now, but I don't know. It's interesting with success comes expectations. And, but I, I don't know. It does seem odd. We'll probably learn a little bit more about it. It wouldn't shock me if Vrabel gets gets total control of it, but yeah, I don't know. They seem to they seem to love him. So yeah, we'll we'll see. But I also thought about going with Luke Fickle because we all had thought and we're kind of told that Jim Leonard was staying on board, right, as a defensive coordinator. Well, it turns out Jim Leonard comes out yesterday and says actually. The bowl game is going to be my last game. I'm moving on. So what we thought was a massive move for Luke Fickle to retain him on that staff, he's actually losing Mr. Wisconsin uh, off the staff, which is, I, I don't know what Leonard's going to end up doing, but that's what we thought was going to be huge for Fickle is now it's like, oh man, that's a bummer. Yeah, that whole situation is interesting. Um. A lot of ins and outs, a lot of what have yous to that one. Uh, there's, 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 it's heated in Madison right now. I'll just tell you that there's a lot going on up there that is, uh, that's got a lot of people upset. Um, Jim Leonard, one of them, athletic director, one of them, 
staff, fickle. They got a mess going on. <laughs> it's uh it's wild. And frankly, I'm shocked how poorly Luke Fickle has at least started off handling the transition. Has not gone well for him. We'll see if he can uh put the pieces back together, if you will. <laughs> right. We, we we shall we shall see. But by loser of the week, we don't talk about Kyrie Irving much on here. Uh, we we tend to stay away from his antics. But Nike officially ended it, man. Mm. Uh, they came out and said, "Hey, Kyrie Irving is no longer a Nike athlete." So this guy, with all the flat Earth stuff and the anti-Semitic stuff, and like. He's now lost his signature shoe, which, by the way, is wildly popular in the National Basketball Association and wildly popular among kids. So who knows how much money he's cost himself in endorsements, in salary. This dude, he is, it's one of the weirder things we've ever seen in sports. And his line of like his signature sneaker is like the second most lucrative line for Nike after LeBron Hmm. and done. I I mean, his time in Boston, the way that it's gone in Brooklyn, like all the stuff off the court, dude, it's, it's, it's all so strange, man. Well, there was strange. There was a lot of people that, that were hinting about this way back whenever he was at Cleveland, like that he's going to be impossible to deal with. And I don't know. It's turned out. It's turned out a a lot like those folks predicted way back then. Um, A strange, such a talented player. Got one of the best handles we've ever seen. Um, It's just wild. Now, Hey, I guess maybe if you're Kyrie, here's an opportunity to launch your shoe line on your own if you want to, but I don't know. Me thinks the, uh, you can only cut off so many people in, in, in big positions and important positions before eventually there's no more opportunities for you. Yeah. Whenever there's, there's a, a lot of distraction that comes with, with what you're there to do, which is supposedly play basketball yeah he has been quite the distraction (laughs) listen man the guy is extremely skilled it's really fun to watch him play basketball especially when he's cooking but when you talk about mismanagement of a career and loss of potential earnings oh boy brutal a lot of zeros a lot of zeros